Now let's return to our report on how cash aid with no strings attached are helping lower income families to pursue longer term goals. AWA measured outcomes for 75 lower income households that received unconditional cash help. The study tracked indicators like employment, health, and food security. Now, these were measured against 93 control group households that didn't receive the cash. After one and a half years, this is what AWA found. Now, mental health quickly improved for those who received the cash. At the end of the study, six in 10 participants described themselves as psychologically well, compared to 36% of the control group. Those who received the cash had better job outcomes. They worked for more hours a week and earned higher wages. 27% also found work with contracts that were more secure compared to 15% of the control group. Around 2 in 10 also saw their relationship with their spouse improve, twice that of the control group. Their relationships with their children improved as well. In particular, women benefited. They gained greater control over their finances, felt more independent, and were motivated to find better work. Now, their relationships also became better. Now, for more on this, I'm now joined in the studio by Huisia Sito. She's Director of Family Services at AWA. And joining us over Zoom is Dr. Ng Kok Ho, Senior Research Fellow and Head of the Case Insights Unit and Social Inclusion Project at the NUS Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. Welcome to the both of you. Uh, first off, Ms. Huisia, why did AWA choose to work on this Family Empowerment Program? What was the idea? behind this? Okay, um, AWA actually has a long history of working with lower income families, families facing uh, hardship. Mm. Uh, and we, we know from research that uh, families or individuals in chronic poverty, they actually uh, are always struggling or fighting to meet urgent needs and accompanying stress. Okay. So that actually also affects the cognitive functioning and the bandwidth uh, to even plan and invest for the future. So even though there are existing um, funding programs around, they may be quite specific in terms of use and also they may be short term. So we were very interested to see how longer term unconditional cash uh, transfers may support uh, or impact our families. And uh, we wanted this program also to be able to give our families the flexibility and autonomy to prioritize their urgent needs and um, their long-term goals. Okay, so if we look at these families that you worked with, 75 of them were given cash assistance, yes. uh, some 90 others were not. How did the different families utilize the money or the cash assistance that were provided to them? Okay, so some of the top spending areas that the families actually utilized it were in the areas of food and groceries uh, to bill repayments uh, in transportation and their childcare needs. Mm. Okay, uh, apart from food and groceries, um, what other ways did they use the money in terms of their you know, uh, job, in, in relation to job prospects or job uh, security, for example? Okay, uh, we have a story of this uh, couple who actually uh, have been saving to buy a motorcycle. Okay. Uh, they were actually um, doing about uh, two jobs or three jobs between each other. Mm. And this motorcycle actually helped them to be able to travel from job to jobs. And that also saved time that they could spend with their daughter. Yeah, And we also have uh, uh, another, fam another uh, of our clients who actually saved the money to pursue a motorcycle license so that she could actually uh, pursue a job that has more flexibility. Okay, that, that's a great example. Uh, Dr. Hung, per, uh, perhaps we can bring you in now. You know, you were involved in the study. Uh, so families that were given the unconditional cash assistance apparently did consistently better in terms of their well-being, in terms of their uh, mental health and employment as well. Did you find these findings surprising? Mm. Well, it's been it's been quite well documented in the in the literature that uh, upfront uh, and adequate social assistance uh, often offer a, a firm foundation for families to do better in the long term. Um, what what 
uh, to me was most striking is that uh, sometimes in in social assistance there is the idea that uh, lower income persons should be encouraged to get off assistance and uh, should be encouraged to get back into work as soon as possible. So that's the idea that uh, any work is better than no work. Uh, well, it turns out that that's not always true. Uh, when people are kind of under the pressure of financial crisis, they, they often feel compelled to take the first job they, they come across, uh, even if it's a poor job. And, and if they do that, then they end up in a cycle of uh, short episodes of, of poor work, unemployment and so on, almost mm -hmm. held in a perpetual cycle of, of long-term insecurity. Whereas if uh, assistance is offered upfront to relieve them of the financial pressure and crisis, mm -hmm. then they can hold out for better jobs. This, this capacity to hold out for better jobs, I think, was the, is one of the most striking findings of this study. Yeah, so, so there is this sense of independence and empowerment among these households that receive the cash assistance. Uh, but does this actually suggest or signal that current help on the ground is insufficient or perhaps our approach to helping vulnerable families, they have not been quite right? Well, this study offers important uh, leads for us to think about the how to redesign current social assistance policies, right? So several mm -hmm. important leads. Uh, one is, of course, that uh, assistance should be sustained. So it should be longer term that it, than it currently is. Uh, it should be continuous and assured, meaning that it shouldn't require frequent kind of trips back uh, to an office to, to file an application, not knowing or not whether the money will 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 keep keep coming. Uh, of course, the amount has to be adequate, so adequacy is key. Um, and the form of assistance is really important. Uh, cash, cash is really helpful. Cash is a powerful resource because it offers flexibility. Uh, and of course, control. People get to decide how they want to use cash. Services and subsidies are important too. Uh, mm. But cash assistance often gives families a, a form of li leverage that other forms of help do not. Okay, Ms. Huixia, you know, this is interesting because, um, you know, the saying that teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Is this program contradicting poverty measures of teaching financial literacy? Um, actually, we don't see this too as contradicting. In mm. fact, it is our aim also to want to see our families become financially independent and achieve financial freedom. And when we speak to our families, that is also very much what they want. Uh, they often tell us that they want to do better for their families. They want to have a more sustainable income through a good job that could uh, set them and the family up for success. So I think, uh, uh, in fact, our families do tell us that is what they want to achieve and we do partner them to reach that long-term goal. Okay, Dr. Ng, you know, so looking ahead with these findings that we have gotten, how do you think Singapore can do better in addressing income inequality and poverty? Mm, there are two major areas. One is, of course, uh, the redesign of social assistance policies, like I mentioned. Uh, importantly, giving upfront assistance so people have the resources and control to improve their lives, rather than set conditions for for uh, set the condition that they change their lives first and then offer a cash reward. Right. So the idea that support should be resources. Uh, rather than reward. Uh, that is one, one area, I think, where there is huge potential for change. The other is in terms of uh, job quality, uh, ensuring decent jobs. Uh, this study found that when people have good jobs, decent jobs, it is the key to long-term income stability. That means setting clear standards for, for decent work, such as stability, wages, uh, social protection, and so on, looking at how we can close gaps in legislation to deliver this, this job standards and then building it into employment services so that when lower income people are receiving finance, financial support, they are not just offered any job, uh, but jobs that can improve their lives. Okay, you know, Dr. Ms. Weisya, you know, before we go, uh, we've been talking about these long-term and sustainable uh, solutions to provide stability for these families, right? What's next then? Where will Ewa and the families involved go from here? Um, actually, today we launched the report. It's mm. available on our website and we would like to take this further by sharing with different parties and seeing how uh, in the social service space and with government agencies, how we may co-create better solutions to really help uplift our families.
All right, thank you very much for this interview. Uh, I was speaking there with Hui Sito from Ewa and Dr. Ng Kok Ho from the NUS Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. Thank you very much. Thank you.